Hey guys, today I'm really really excited that I can finally show you my B6 Stology notebook. Funny story that's not so funny, I actually ordered this ages ago and um, I ordered it off Amazon and the seller accidentally sent me a A6 instead of a B6. Oh, this is the A6, oh no! They've sent me the wrong size, I cannot believe this. Oh my goodness, they've sent me an A6 instead of a B6, so that wasn't fun at all um, because I'd waited ages for it because it has to come all the way from Japan and then I messaged them, I was like, hey, you've sent me the wrong one and then it took them ages to respond to me, so that wasn't great at all, especially because I wanted this for ages, you guys know, you guys know that I'm always talking about how much I've wanted it, so I finally decided to buy myself it and um, yeah, that happened, so I'm very excited to finally have it. I've actually already taken it out of its packaging and I have, um, if you go on Google and search how to break in a book, I have done that and I think it just helps the spine a bit because I know that these books, when you eventually fill them up, they go like huge and I just thought I would give that a go to see if it helps the spine in any way. Today I'm just going to show you what it looks like inside and I'm also going to do some kind of swatches with watercolours and stamps to see how it looks when it, if it bleeds through and things like that. There aren't many YouTube videos on this notebook which is why I wanted to do one because uh, why it took me so long to decide if I wanted one or not is there's not a lot of information out there about these notebooks if you want to use them in your traveller's notebook. So it comes with this little packaging band on it that just says what it is. So here you go, Editor Series 365 Days Notebook B6 size and uh, it says here, so there's a thin grey grid on the paper, there's day, week and month right at the top and yeah there's 368 pages and otherwise it's just got this plain black cover, um, it's quite matte although it kind of looks a bit shiny because I've got the window here so it's just reflecting the light and on the side it has this if it will focus, there we go, it says stationery, standard and, I think that says standard, yeah, standard and technology, what should have been is and stology, and the spine has kind of got a, um, you can see a little bit there, some kind of texture, kind of ripples along it, and the back is just plain, and if you open it up, there is a very fine grid and it's more obvious I think than what I thought it would be because everybody talks about how subtle it is maybe because it's a plain notebook and I've not put anything on it yet that it looks so um, obvious and at the top here this is where the date and month thing is so yeah let's just kind of get straight into it because I'm excited to see how the pages hold up with all my watercolouring so I'm just going to go to a back page oh, also when you open it up there is this kind of grey thicker card there and also on the back just in case you're interested <laughs> so I'm going to use a back page so my watercolours are my White Knight St Petersburg watercolours I'm also going to use some stamps, I've got my favourite stamps here and I'll be using the ink pads that I use just to see how it would kind of work with normal watercolouring like how I do my journals all the time in case you're wondering, the brush I'm using is the 18 Graduate Dela and Rowney Round Wash and it is excellent for watercolours. It holds the watercolour really, really well. So I'm going to go for one of my favourite blue colours, which is Turquoise Blue. Oh, it looks gorgeous on this paper. I'm used to um, cream paper because the Midori M MD paper that I always use is actually cream rather than white and this is a very kind of white even though I have tried to break in the spine a little bit it doesn't want to lay flat at the moment which is a little bit annoying but I'm sure it'll get there so, so far I'm loving how the watercolour is going on the paper, we'll see how it dries. I 
I use quite a fair amount of water and watercolour when I'm watercolouring in my journal pages so um, it's going to be interesting to see how it holds up. So I'm going to bring it closer. You can see how much water I've been using on this. I've not, <laughs> I've not been going lightly with it. But look how gorgeous that colour is. It's really, really vibrant on this white paper. Um, I'm excited to see how it's going to dry. I'm actually going to get a hair dryer and dry this quickly, so then I can show you guys and then move on to stamping and things like that. So just as I had the camera pause, just before I started to hair dry the page to dry it, I actually used um, some of this blue Dela and Rowney paint as well, watercolour paint on here, just to see if there would be any difference with the bleed through or anything like that using two different watercolours. And this is how the dried watercolour looks. It looks really, really nice. Some nice splodges on there. Very, very pretty. Just going to turn the page over so we can see what the back of it looks, if there's any bleed through or shadowing and things like that. So there is a lot of crinkling. You can see all these little bumps here, but I'm not too phased by that to be honest because the paper is so thin. I guess that is just what is going to happen, but I'm absolutely really shocked because there is no bleed through at all. But there's no bleed through or anything at all. Like here you can't even tell what colour is on the other side of the page at all. Um, and the crinkling isn't too bad I don't think. It's only where there's been watercolour. Um, and obviously some people actually really like that. That's why people buy Tomoe River paper. Um, listen to that, it sounds so nice. But yeah, I'm really really impressed with that so far. So... Um, I'll put that there. I'm just using an acrylic block to keep the page down because it doesn't want to stay down. Next I'm going to use my archival ink which is uh, by Ranger and I'm going to use a couple of my stamps and see how it works on the paper. So recently I've not shown you guys these yet but I got these from eBay and they are absolutely fantastic. I got them at a really good price because I sent an offer to the seller and they accepted but they are by Honey Do Crafts and you can get these on their website and they are just number stamps and they are really really great for dating your pages. That's how I've been using them anyway. So these are just outline ones and these are kind of like uh, block black ones. So I'm going to be using these. Because this uh, notebook journal will be my fifth traveller's notebook insert, um, I'm going to be using the number five. And from this bit, I'm going to use one of these. I'm just going to stamp fifth. So I've got my acrylic block. Oops, so it did stick to the page a little bit then, but let's see. So that's how it looks there. And on the other side. So that's really great too. There is a tiny, tiny, really, really small amount of bleed through. If you can see the couple of little speckles there. But again, I'm quite impressed with that. I don't think that's too bad. I think it's actually coming up a little bit worse on camera than it is in person. So that's the first stamp done. So next I'm going to use this wooden block. So then you've kind of seen a range of wooden block stamps and acrylic stamps because I know people use both like me. So I'm going to use the same ink pad, the archival one. And I'm just going to put this there. There we go. So that's what it looks like on the page again. 
work pretty well. And on the other side, there we go. So it is definitely a little bit see-through because the paper is so thin. Um, but yeah, I am honestly really impressed with that. I think that's pretty good, considering how much water I used on the watercolour. Um, and considering this is archival ink, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm very impressed with that. The last thing I want to swatch is my fountain pen and another one of my pens if I can find it. So the two pens I use most in my journals is this one which is the Pilot Pure Liquid Ink V-Ball 0.7 and this fountain pen, um, this fountain pen with a fine nib but it does go quite inky on um, thin paper so I'm just going to give this a go. So I've just put journal, so it says fifth journal, and it's actually gone quite thin on this paper actually, it's not like um, gone as thick as I thought it would, it's, it was almost a little bit scratchy, which isn't a bad thing, it looks definitely more like a, a fine fountain pen should look. And on the back, no bleed through at all, so that's really really good. And then with this pen... I'm just going to make a little line under where I've written journal. And you can see that's already quite a bit thicker, but it will be because it is a thicker nibbed pen. There you go. And on the other side, so obviously there is a little bit more um, kind of shadowing because it's a thicker nib, but otherwise I think that looks really, really good. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this B6 notebook with me. I've really enjoyed swatching it to see how it will kind of hold up. I haven't finished my other journal yet that I'm going through, my other B6 one. So once I've finished that, which isn't too long, I will be moving into this one for sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it in my, um, in my Chic Sparrow Traveller's Notebook or maybe this one. Um, I did want to point out with this actually just show you guys really really quickly uh, this has started to fade in some spots which I don't mind whatsoever it's all part of the aging process with leather um, but as you can see here this used to be a very very light blue dye and it's actually going nude so it's kind of showing the leather colour underneath the raw leather and also here along where it's, uh, the circle is and also a teeny tiny bit here where the golden snitch is, if you can see there. But I thought I'd show you guys that. I thought, um, I was actually really worried about this happening because I messaged Elra Her Leather and said, is this ever going to happen? Because I loved it so much, I was scared of using it, I didn't want it to ever fade. And already it has started to fade, which is quite funny. Um, but I honestly do not mind at all. It's actually made me like it a little bit more because I'm seeing how it's aged and, you know... I really really do love it and I don't mind whatsoever. I am going to message her though about it just so that she knows in case she uses that really really light blue again. Um, so obviously it's not going to fade anytime soon here where it's really really dark. Um, but maybe these lighter bits here will start to go a bit more kind of nude leather. Um, but I do think it really it looks really cool. I just love to see how Traveller's Notebooks age. But I thought I'd point that out to you guys. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm so excited to be able to start using this soon. I'll just show you here how this has started to look. Can you see just a bit of crinkles from the watercolour? But yeah, I'm so impressed with that. I really like how well it's held up to my excessive water usage. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up for me. Let me know in the comments below. Do you have astrology in your traveller's notebook? Um, are you considering buying one? If you are, I do recommend it. They are beautiful and I'm very glad that I finally own one. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye!